Well, I'd finally had enough of the rave about the Qatar Q Suites and had to try it out for myself. I saved up enough Alaska Airlines miles, 150,000 to be exact, to get on board this long A350 flight 15 hours from San Francisco out to Doha. We're here at San Francisco's International Terminal, which if you're unfamiliar with the setup of this, there's one central area here for check-in and immigration, and then there's two separate wings, the A gates and the G gates. G gates being for Star Alliance carriers, considering United has their main Trans-Pacific hub here, and the A gates basically for Sky Team, One World, and independent carriers. Now the only airline that has set check-in counters in San Francisco's international terminal is United, considering that it's their big trans-Pacific hub. The rest of the airlines rotate between counters depending on the day. So there are multiple screens around the entire terminal to help guide you to exactly where you need to get in order to get to your check-in desks. Qatar was in row six for us today, and you can see they break it down between the business class passengers and the economy class passengers with a couple extra lines for just plain bag drop or purchasing tickets. The nice thing about the business class passengers is you had this nice little carpet to make it a little bit more decorative considering besides that there's nothing really to separate the two things other than two different lines. Bags dropped and off to security you'll see here that there's some nice art that you walk past. That's something that SFO does really well. As you walk around you're going to see all different types of arts like this from different Asian countries which was currently on display. You're going to see other art scattered throughout the terminals here at SFO, and they also have their own airport museum located right here in the International Terminal if you do have some time outside security. Through security, the checks are pretty simple. There's no immigration checks before departure to go through here out of San Francisco, and so we're off to find the lounge. Now, Qatar does not have their own dedicated lounge, but if you go through security and make an immediate left, you come to where most of the lounges sit in the A-gates. You'll see different airlines have different lounges here, and while Qatar does not have their lounge, they're using currently the temporary Air France lounge, which I found to be somewhat strange considering there are One World carriers that have lounges here. The British Airways lounge actually is pretty nice. However, the temporary Air France lounge will be our home for today. Now once you get upstairs to the hallway of lounges, you'll find that some of the airlines do have permanent lounge locations up here, some of which are actually pretty nice. Airlines like China Airlines, Japan Airlines, Virgin Atlantic, stuff like that. So the temporary Air France lounge was just kind of a temporary fix while they build the new one. What I do have to say was kind of peculiar for my standing at least, is just that Qatar Airways is this big, lavish, luxurious airline and so using some temporary lounge just didn't really seem to fit the rest of their style, especially once we arrived in Doha and were able to check out their crowning business class lounge. And just past the Japan Airlines lounge, with only a printer sized piece of paper to help us find it, we came across the temporary Air France lounge, which, to be generous, was underwhelming. Once inside, you'll notice that there's two main rooms here in this lounge, the one that you first enter where there wasn't a whole lot of people sitting, considering that there was a busy hallway right outside, and another room just past that. What this lounge does get pretty well, however, is the views of the ramp. You do have pretty good views of the A gates and the B gates here in San Francisco. They did have a quick grab buffet that you could walk up and grab however much food and drink you needed. However, the options weren't exactly plentiful, but we will take a look at that in a second. Now really all you need to eat to keep yourself substantiated is a carb, a fat, and a protein, and they did have the basics covered. They had some vegetarian options as well, and if you were just looking for a quick bite, it wasn't that bad. I wasn't too upset considering that I knew I was gonna get plenty of food once I was on board the airplane. However, for what I was expecting from a grand Qatar Airways lounge, it was a little bit subpar for those standards. And then I decided to head back down into the terminal after not too long, considering that there wasn't a whole lot to do in the lounge and the Wi-Fi was broken that day, and so I decided I could get plenty of good views down in the terminal. Now that I had had some good free food, I had taken advantage of basically what the lounge had to offer. So we were back down into the A-gates and off to find our gate.
Now there are two lounges permanently installed in the A-Gates. Off to my left here is the Emirates Lounge, which I've heard good things about, although I've never been able to check out for myself. And on the right side here is the British Airways Lounge, which I've also heard amazing things about. This was actually newly renovated within the last couple of years, so I am hoping to check that out soon. Now one thing that San Francisco Airport does really well in my opinion is that they've basically renovated the entire restaurant scene at the airport. So a lot of these restaurants are local food, local chefs, or at least small non-chain restaurants. So you're not gonna find too many McDonald's or Starbucks in this airport. Instead, you're gonna find smaller brands, some of which are specific to San Francisco. Something that I've noticed happening in more and more airports that are getting renovated, and I do like that a lot more, considering that I don't always want a burger and fries. Sometimes I actually wanna try some of the local cuisine or what some of the local chefs have created for us. all the way at the end of the A-Gates, gate A11 was gonna be our gate today for our flight out to Doha. Now, if you're unfamiliar with the setup of this international terminal, the restrooms, restaurants, all that are on the upper level of this terminal. And then once you find your gate, there's escalators to take you down to the specific boarding area for your flight. But from this upper level, we did have great views of our three-year-old A350-1000, which was loading up with lots of catering, which surprised me until I realized that it's a 15-hour flight and they had a lot of people to feed for that time. I decided to walk around the terminal a little bit longer, check out more of the restaurants and get views of some of the other airplanes while I waited for us to board as we did still have about a half hour. From up top here, you can see down low where the boarding area is. They had announced that pre-boarding was gonna start soon and so I decided to get my stuff together, head downstairs and get ready to get into my much awaited Q suite. Now when I got on board, one of the first things that surprised me was just how tall the queue suites were. I was excited to get the door shut and see just how private they were once we actually got in the air. 9K was gonna be our home today, which was the last seat before the second galley on board this airplane. 9K was a nice seat for me, considering it was a little bit closer to the window, so I chose it specifically for that reason. You'll find that in the odd numbered seats on the A350-1000. And the even number seats, they still have window access, however, they are a little bit more removed. Privacy isn't an issue, considering you have a closed door suite, but depending on how far you wanna look over the center console to actually see out the window, depends on which seat you might wanna choose. Before the cabin filled up, I wanted to take a look at what the middle seats had to offer. Now, if you're in an odd number middle seat, there is a divider you can put down to share the space with someone traveling on the other side. But if you're in an even number middle seat, in flight, you can actually put that divider down and turn it into a double bed for the two of you. So if you are traveling with someone, depending on if you want to share the bed space with them or not, keep that in mind when choosing your seat. Now back to my suite though, 9K, so we can take a little bit more of what this seat has to offer to us. Now they did give us a pillow and blanket. The pillow wasn't too substantial, but when they did make the bed for me in flight, they did give me a better quality pillow, so that was nice. The blanket was super warm and super comfortable though, and I was very grateful to have that on this flight. Now the TV, in addition to a USB charging port, also had an HDMI port, which I didn't get to test out, so I'm not quite sure what that was for. Below that, there was also some counter storage space, so for the long-term storage, maybe takeoff and landing, it wasn't working too well, but for in-flight, if you do need to stash some stuff there quick, they did have plenty of surfaces for you to do that. Down below is the footrest. One thing I found interesting is that they do have a note there, no stowage for takeoff and landing, which made me a little bummed because I was gonna have to put all my stuff in the overhead bin. However, I did have it there and the flight attendant suggested I just keep it there for takeoff and landing. So I guess they aren't following that too, too strictly. Now off to my right side, underneath the counter, there is a small little space here. Same thing for takeoff and landing, things were kind of falling out of there, but for in flight, it was great to have things there. Now the buttons. There was basically unlimited buttons here. Do not disturb buttons so that they wouldn't wake you. A large number of seat adjustments where you could adjust the entire seat to a preset mode or adjust each piece individually. 
just below that there was a remote the remote was fantastic it was thin it was light and most importantly it operated almost as a second screen not only was I able to control everything on the CPAC TV with this remote, but if I needed a secondary screen to watch something or keep the map up or whatever I wanted, I could have that on this remote. And so I was basically able to have my CPAC TV showing one thing and the CPAC TV remote showing another thing. Just behind that remote is your universal charging outlet along with another USB charging port. There was no shortage of charging ports in this seat. I was able to keep my laptop, my watch, and my phone well charged the entire time. Speaking of which, if you are trying to purchase anything in flight, there is a contactless payment option here. I didn't necessarily see what that was for, I'm assuming it's for some sort of duty free shopping or something in the business class cabin, but if you are trying to purchase something, you do have that available to you. Underneath that's where they keep the safety cards, which is kind of just wedged in this pocket. I found it kind of hard to get out, but once I got it out, I found not only was there a safety card in there, but in addition to that, there was also instructions on how to get the door off in the event of an emergency if it became stuck in flight. And underneath that console there is a little bit more storage. I use this to store my shoes once I put the slippers on from the pajama set once we got in flight. Now directly adjacent, there is another cushioned seat looking area and it's adjustable height wise and it also opens up to be an additional storage area with a large storage bin. I was able to store basically all of the contents I needed for this flight in this bin and then I could put my backpack with everything else up in the overhead locker to save some space for my feet. A couple of the amenities you'll find in there were some noise cancelling headphones to use on board this flight along with a bottle of water which they did keep coming. I ended up going through plenty of bottles of water and they were happy to bring me more. Speaking of beverages, shortly thereafter they came around with a pre-departure hot towel and a glass of champagne which I was happy to accept. And then the thing I was most excited for the first time on an airplane that I've had a closed door suite. Now obviously it can't be closed for takeoff and landing, but I was very excited to try that out once we got in the air. So I settled into my seat and I waited for everyone to get on board and depart. One of the things that I found truly interesting is that the seats that are closest to the window on this airplane are rearward facing. It was also my first rearward facing seat on an airplane, which at surface value wasn't all that strange. However, when you were taking off and landing, the sensation of the thrust and the braking was different than what you usually expect on an airplane. While we waited for people to board, they came around and offered pajama sets, which came with pants, shirts, and slippers for every passenger on board, and I was happy to slip into those when it was time for sleep. The other thing was the tray table. It took me a while to figure it out, but there was just a press release button underneath which pulled it out. Now the tray table size was huge in my opinion. It actually fit more than enough space for all the meals in addition to some other stuff for working and whatnot once we actually got in the air. The next thing that got passed out was the in-flight menus. They came in two pieces. There was the food menu and there was the wine menu. I'm not much of a wine drinker myself, but I did indulge in a glass of champagne, so it was nice to see the options that they did have there for us. And there was plenty of options if you want to stick around and watch me flip through that. If not, let's skip ahead to the food menu with the timestamps. Now similar to what would be considered a first class service, they have an a la carte style dining. Now they do come through the aisles at set times to offer meals to everyone on board, but at any time throughout the flight if you do need food, you are more than welcome to go to the galley or call the flight attendant over and ask for something else. In addition, there's also plenty of other beverages besides wine if you're looking for coffee, tea, maybe some non-alcoholic beverages, all here additional to English and Arabic. Now the amenity kit, which didn't come in the traditional bag, which is fine, I have plenty of those bags. What I really wanted was the stuff inside of it. They did have some socks that they gave us, which I ended up not using, considering that I got slippers with the pajama set. But in addition to that, we also had the normal lip balm, face cream, body lotion, and some toilet spray. Now, speaking of toilet spray, let's check out what the bathroom has to offer on board this plane. The size itself is pretty standard, but they do add the wood paneling and the black countertops to give it a little bit more luxurious of a look as opposed to the normal white counters. Amenities that they offer are fairly basic. They have the normal face cloths, they have lotion and face mist for those passengers that want that. In addition to that, in a drawer, they also have extra toothbrushes for those passengers who are looking to brush their teeth. However, the coolest feature was the flush button, considering when you push that, it's going to close the lid and then flush for you. 
Now as we push back, I was enjoying that late afternoon sun here in San Francisco in the backdrop of a nice A380, but I do want to take a break from the music here to just take a short listen to the startup of this wonderful engine on board this A350. Now within 30 minutes of takeoff, it looked like pretty much everyone had closed the doors to their suites, which made me excited because I was more than happy to get on board with that trend. 
Now the door does close all the way to give you a fully enclosed private experience. There is a small opening at the bottom and it's just short enough where the flight attendants can see over so they can see if you're sleeping and if they need to ask you a question or bring you beverages, they can see what you're doing in there. After enjoying all the sights departing San Francisco, I decided to take out my headset so I could start watching the in-flight entertainment and see what options they had available for us, which we will take a look at shortly. Before that though, I did want to connect to the in-flight Wi-Fi I was on board this airplane. Now if you are a premium club member, you do get free Wi-Fi on board Qatar Airways flights. However, even if you're just traveling in whatever cabin, you do have access to full flight Wi-Fi for only 10 US dollars, which is already a great deal for full flight Wi-Fi, especially considering that this flight was over 15 hours. So I was getting over 15 hours of Wi-Fi on board this airplane for just 10 US dollars, a steal in my book. Now, as if having the touchscreen TV and the CPAC TV remote isn't enough, you're also able to connect your phone via a QR code. As long as you're connected to the in-flight Wi-Fi, you can pair your device using the code that it gives you, and then your phone becomes an additional remote, which means you can have something on the screen, something on the CPAC TV remote, and still be able to control everything with your cell phone. Now as far as the in-flight entertainment goes on Qatar Airways, I've got to say it's probably got the best in-flight entertainment system that I've ever seen on any flight. They have seven different categories of different things that you can use to entertain yourself from movies, TV shows, games, all that kind of stuff. And within those sections they have all the different options of course. And whenever I'm on board the A350, my favorite part is always being able to use the cameras that are mounted to the airplane to see just the views, especially on taxi takeoff and landing. Now, they have three camera views. You can have one that's pointing straight down, you can have one that's on the nose facing forward, and one that's mounted up at the top of the tail. Check out just how much we can see out of this forward camera. I mean, the visibility is fantastic. And then looking at the TV show options that are here. TV show options are available in multiple different languages and multiple different genres, but once you click on TV, you can scroll through it. You'll see here as I zoom through all this, just how many different categories they have. Once you pick a category and pick a TV show, for example, I was going to watch Parks and Rec on this flight, not only do they have full seasons, but they have multiple full seasons. I mean, guys, that is like unheard of in aviation. Fantastic. I mean, I could have been on this flight for a week and still not been able to get through all the content that I wanted to watch. Maybe your style's more movies on these long flights to help pass the time. Well, don't worry because there's just as many movie categories as there are TV categories and the movie selection is even greater than the TV show selection. Now as we pass the famous Lake Tahoe, which is right on the border of California and Nevada, they came around to pass out the pajamas. Now the pajamas came in different sizes and unlike most airlines, they actually asked which size we wanted and then they handed us that size. So it still was a little bit oversized as is usually expected, but it's pajamas so it's not the end of the world. But it just came with a nice pants set, a nice shirt, and a pair of slippers, which was super comfortable. 
The next problem that I usually have to tackle when I do try to sleep on airplanes is the temperature. Usually these planes are kept too hot for my comfort and it's really hard to get cooled off. However, when you are flying on board the Qatar A350, overhead on that panel you've got the individual eyeball outlets which are an excellent tool to help keep your suite at the optimal temperature. Now shortly after takeoff the flight attendants came through the cabin to ask everybody for their orders for the food and also how they wanted to spend the flight considering that they work on an a la carte basis so you can eat at any time although they will still come through the cabin at pre-selected intervals just to hand out meals for those who want it but if you do get hungry you can always order some extra food and I actually did take advantage of that on this flight. The first meal service that we were given, or snack service I should say, was a bowl of nuts and a nice mocktail that I went with which was like a pineapple mango. Now the nice thing is because Qatar always flies to some countries that are dry or at least have people on board that don't drink alcohol so frequently, they actually have a pretty extensive list of mocktails so if you are looking for a fun crafted drink that maybe is non-alcoholic, this may be the choice for you. With the sun setting though, the cabin started to get a little bit dark and so I was trying to get enough light set up in my suite just for eating sake. Now the light over your shoulder has a couple different modes, it's got a light underneath and it's got the spotlight itself. So if you are trying to sleep or if you're trying to work, there's lights of different settings in different locations to help you out with that. It wasn't long though before they got the mood lighting set for the main meal course of the flight and the flight attendants started coming around to pass out the tablecloths and set up the place settings for everyone. Now if you do have your closed door, keep in mind they're going to have to continuously open and close it. I ended up leaving the door open just while they were serving the meal just to make it easier for them, but after the meal was served I went ahead and shut my door once again. Now if we're talking about living in luxury here, my first course here was just a lobster and caviar little dish. Came with a bowl of breads that I kind of ate sporadically throughout the meal, but starting your meal with lobster and caviar, I mean, can't really get much fancier than that on an airplane. We also got these fun cups with our place settings, although they never used it. Every time I ordered a drink, they came with that drink served in a separate glass, so this fun cup actually never got used. Shortly after that, it was time for my appetizer course, however. I chose the Spanish style tapas today, so I had some peppers with cojito cheese, some calamata olives, and a nice spicy dip. I couldn't exactly tell what it was, and I had lost my menu at this point of the flight, so I wasn't able to figure out what that was. But it also came with some breadsticks to dip into that. Now watching the sunset on an airplane while you're being served a meal in a business class cabin just has this extra cool kind of feeling where you're just having an all around good time and I always try and take all that in. Right after they took my appetizer dishes away from me, the next up was the main course which I had ordered before departure actually. In addition to that I got my fun drinks, I got another mocktail and I got a coke to go with this meal. And you'll see here they didn't put it in the fun glass, they gave me separate glasses to go with it. Now as far as the food goes, I the beef was a little bit overcooked, but that's kind of to be expected on airplanes. The taste and the sauce was actually pretty good though. The cream spinach was also somewhat good, and I actually ended up not eating the mac and cheese just because I was kind of full after that. But then they came around with dessert, and how are you going to say no to dessert, right? So this is just a plain cheesecake with raspberry and apricots and a little bit of ice cream on the side. Absolutely fantastic. Doesn't matter how full you are, can't say no to cheesecake. After dinner the lights went down and the flight crew was coming around making everyone's bed with the turndown service. I figured I might as well partake in that so I asked them to make my bed as well if they could and so they gladly obliged they went and grabbed the extra bedding that wasn't already handed to us. So the blanket we had already had but they got a nicer pillow and a mattress pad and made the bed for me here so once I got back from the restroom after dinner I could go ahead and relax in my suite. Another thing that was super cool about this is you could have what I'm interpreting as the volume being in stereo or mono mode. Basically you can have surround sound just within your own headset or you can have just kind of a single point system. Playing around with the remote I also realized that while I had one TV show on the remote I could have another TV show up on the screen up in front of me. Now obviously you can only listen to one at a time but it takes kind of having that dual screen to a whole different level considering usually the seatback TV remote is able to have a map in addition to what you're watching but not a whole different program. Anyway though, I got my door closed, I laid down in bed and I was ready to get some sleep so I will check in with you guys after some rest.
Well, good morning or good evening or whatever it is on board this airplane right now. Time on airplanes is just kind of a construct on these long flights. But we were awake and we were basically somewhere over Europe heading towards Qatar still. Basically how I did it, I just set a timer on my phone for seven hours. I put it under my pillow so that way I could get a nice uninterrupted seven hours of sleep. And when I woke up, I still had plenty of time to explore the seat options. Now, unfortunately, after waking up, I went to connect to the Wi-Fi that I had purchased for this flight, but I was found to the, have the service unavailable and it actually remained like this for the rest of the flight, so I, I was only able to actually use that Wi-Fi for a few hours before I went to sleep. The other thing that was being kind of screwy on my Seatback TV here is you can see it's got like multiple flight routes mapped out here. I couldn't figure out what was happening and my girlfriend's TV was not having the same problem. So I'm not exactly sure what's going on, if this was just kind of all the flights the plane had done in the last week or something, or I don't know. Now people were starting to wake up from their naps and the nice thing about having the closed door suites is whether you want the windows open or closed, it really doesn't affect any of the other suites. It does, you can tell if you stand up, but if you're just within your suite, if you want the windows shut, it doesn't matter if someone else has the window open, it's still plenty dark for you. Shortly after that though, it was breakfast time. Like I mentioned, I usually don't eat breakfast, but for some reason on the airplane, I eat for the principle of it. And a three course breakfast, goes even one step further. Now the breakfast first course for me was just cold cuts and cheese. I always appreciate the smoked salmon and it also came with a piece of pumpernickel with a caper berry and some sort of yogurt sauce. We also got another bread basket but with more breakfast type breads this time and along with that was a coconut banana smoothie. As we flew over the mountains of Turkey, the flight attendant came around to ask what we wanted for our main course for breakfast. I decided to go with the acai bowl, even though she kept pronouncing it as the acai bowl. But still, I got my acai bowl, which was basically just a smoothie with a little bit of strawberries and chocolate chips on top, and some sort of cream off to the side. It was good, but it wasn't exactly the best acai bowl I've ever had. It wasn't long after that that they announced our descent into Doha, and just about that same time the sun started setting and so it was kind of a race to see who would beat us to the ground, would it be us or the sun? And as one final service on descent we got one last hot towel and a box with two chocolates in it. Now the approach to Daha was actually from the north and so we got a little bit of a view of the city although it was pretty much right under us so I got whatever shots I could. But in the meantime we'll sit back and enjoy our landing here in Qatar.
And with that, welcome to Qatar. The flight attendants had announced shortly after arrival that we would be parking at a hard stand and being bussed over to the terminal, which was kind of strange considering usually after these long flights I do like to get out the jet bridge and enter the terminal right away. Getting cramped on a bus isn't exactly my style. But that being said, at least business class passengers were prioritized, got off first, and had our own specific business class bus, which was nice. But with that, as we head out to immigration, it's time for our reflection on this flight. Now I've got to say, all the rave that these Q-suites get, especially from people like Nonstop Dan, 100% warranted. It was an absolutely amazing flight, at no point was I uncomfortable, I never ran out of things to watch, I never ran out of things to eat, all the food I did eat was of great quality. The lounge in San Francisco was a little bit depressing, but you'll see soon that the lounge here in Doha was absolutely fantastic. And so all in all, I would do this flight 10 more times in the next week if I could. But in my opinion, there's no such thing as too long of a flight in the Q-Suites, which is exactly what these airlines have to go for considering that their average flight time to the Western world is 12 hours or more. So for the people especially that aren't as into airplanes, there needs to be some sort of better way to pass that time. Now I was actually transiting to another flight to Abu Dhabi that left in about 9 hours from now so I was able to fully enjoy the airport. Now that being said, if you are transiting onto an economy class flight, you do not get access to the business class lounge by default unless you arrived on a business class ticket and your layover is more than 6 hours, then you get access. Obviously if you have one world priority you can also get lounge access and if there's space available you can also purchase lounge access. For about $120 we are able to get lounge access to this lounge here. Now once inside, rather than going through arriving customs, we went through transfer customs and continued on into the Doha airport and into the lounge, which I didn't actually get too much footage of considering I have another video coming up where I'm going to be taking a look at the lounges in Doha, which are world renowned. But hopefully you enjoyed this flight. Stay posted for some more videos coming up soon. In particular, I have a Qatar Airways A380 video coming up later this year that I am super excited for. So stay posted for that, but thank you so much for watching. Make sure to leave your comments below on what you think on Qatar Airways and the Q Suites. But for now, safe travels, and I will see you all next time.